And religion has no compassion, no care. And, and we just have to learn. Uh, we need each other and should be helping and caring for each other. Uh, what we shouldn't be is professional. Uh, there are people, you know, um, that just are a pain. And they're a pain because they're just not in the body of Christ. But there are people who just get themselves in a mess and things happen. And what they need is someone to lift them up, not to knock them down, not to criticize them, and not to blame them. There's people that need blame, and there's people that need compassion. And we need to be careful in the body of Christ that we realize, uh, you know, what, what really helps people is when you have love and care for them. Uh, selfish ambition and selfishness. There's nothing worse than uh, self-centered husbands, you know, um, very selfish and their wife can't even walk down the road. Where are you going? What are you doing? Yeah, you know, that kind of attitude is awful. Um, that's not a husband, that's a pain in the whatnots. And, and you know, there are husbands like that that want to dominate their wives. Uh, and, you know, nothing worse than a wife wanting to know everywhere you're going to, you know. You want to go out and um, play golf <clears throat> or something and where you going? Where are you got this to do? Um, or you sit down for a meal and she said, that's bad for you. I said, but it tastes nice. <laughs> um, yeah. Now, care and compassion is about just caring. Some people just need to have someone sit down and talk and listen. And that's all I did with a woman in Tulsa when she came and she got all these medical tests. She was in terrible fear. All she needed was someone to sit down for an hour and a half and just listen and get rid of her fears. Um, there are hurting people. And why isn't the church a caring church? That's what makes a church different. That's where miracles happen, when you have compassion. James 2 said, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead, being alone. You know, faith without works. Now, you talk about men of faith. All I do is I live normal. Um, I, I'm not, I never ever ask God for a word. I don't need to. He lives in me. Um, I, I don't know why people are so confused about God because he talks to me. I talk to him. Um, but you see, the thing I do is I get on with life. My Bible says that if we walk and we're going to go to the left hand or the right hand, we're going to hear a voice behind us saying this is the way, walk in it. But what he doesn't say is going to tell me how many sugars I can have in my tea. Uh, shall I stir it clockwise or anti-clockwise? And when they become Christians, they get superstitious. Oh, I, I, you know, what's God's will for my life? Lord, what do you want? Well, actually, all God wants you to do is get on with life. And as you get on with life, if you walk to the left hand or the right hand, you're going to hear God say, hey, this is the way. And, you know, God wants us to walk in the spirit, not to sit down and wait for instructions. Just get on with life. Living is very normal. And I don't have to be what everyone wants me to be. Um, every single person in this church must be filled with the Holy Spirit. The ushers, the cleaners, the car park attendants, the gardeners, the technicians, everyone. Do you know, how can you get people to actually realize that 
If something needs doing, do it now. Don't plan to do it in three months. I'm a now person. It, my Bible says this. I think yours probably does too. Now is the acceptable time of the Lord. See, if, if I want a job done, I want it done now. I don't want it next week. I want it now. And, and I find that a lot of religious people, they can delay things and delay things and delay, and, and it's an aggravation. If I want to do something, the first thing you do is you just start. People say to me, oh, we've got to plan it. Well, I'll be dead by the time you finish planning. I want to get on with it. Life's about getting on with living, isn't it? You know, come down in the morning and your wife's down in the kitchen and you say to her, um, darling, where's the breakfast? She said, I'm planning it. <laughs> I'm planning to leave. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, that's, you, you, you know, I come down, actually the phone rings in the bedroom. My wife says, the breakfast is ready. Now I go down and thank God it's there. If I come home in the evening, the meal's there. Or if it's not there, she's rung me up and said, what would you like? And gives me a choice. You can have fish or fish. Um, but <laughs> Christ loved the church and gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it. A holy church without spot or wrinkle, but that it should be holy before him in love. And in Colossians, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the first fruits from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Do you know, the only reason people get upset is because they don't get on with God. Can I say that again? The only reason people get upset is because they don't get on with God. Because my God orders all things after a counsel of his own will. So if you're getting upset with what happens, it's because you're upset with God. Because in the end, God has the preeminence. Not you, not your selfish ambition, but God himself decides what he wants. And it's amazing how he can manipulate circumstances to corner you. That's God. Being crafty, he catches you with God. Uh, and, and God's really in control he really is and I rest in the fact that hey life's life you know there's things that go right and there's things that go wrong just part of life and when you get into this spiritual state where you think that what goes wrong is not for your benefit you're stupid because sometimes things go wrong to teach you and things go wrong to to actually be a blessing 